The Polymorphism of Chocolate. Hey, I'm Justin Carton. And I'm Aurora Zaytoon. And working with Davidi Patel, we studied the polymorphism of chocolate. What do we define as polymorphism? Polymorphism, by definition, is existing in several different forms. The main thing responsible for this phenomenon to occur in chocolate is cocoa butter. This ingredient is polymorphic, which is what alters the structure of the chocolate at different temperatures. Without further ado, we present to you our findings on the polymorphism of chocolate. For the materials necessary, one would need 147 grams of pure milk chocolate, or two bars of Hershey's milk chocolate, one hot plate, three beakers holding 30 milliliters, one beaker holding 400 milliliters, two ice baths, one stirring rod, three small styrofoam plates, one graduated cylinder, one scupula, one thermometer, and one spoon. With this, let's move on to our procedure of conducting this experiment. We examine four different crystalline structures of chocolate, forms 1, 3, 4, and 5. Structure 5 is the most desirable type of chocolate due to its glossiness, snap, and melt-in-your-mouth quality that the other forms do not offer. Therefore, our store-bought chocolate already resembled the structure. To obtain the other crystalline forms, we must temper the chocolate. To do so, we did the following. With the intention of using a water bath, we prepared a beaker with 400 milliliters of water. Then we placed a thermometer in the beaker of water and put the beaker on the hot plate until the temperature of the water reached 45 degrees Celsius. Next, we measured 147 grams of pure milk chocolate or two whole bars of Hershey's milk chocolate on a scale. Once the water had reached 45 degrees Celsius and remained at that constant temperature, we monitored it by adding cold water to stabilize the temperature when it increased. Next, we placed the beaker of 147 grams of chocolate into the water bath. In continuation, we monitored the chocolate until the chocolate melted completely. Once melted, we distributed 30 milliliters of chocolate into each of three beakers. Then, we stuck thermometers into each of the chocolates and we placed two of the beakers with the chocolate into separate ice baths. With this, we placed the third beaker into a freezer to examine form one, which would be obtained by rapid cooling. Later, we took the beakers out of their ice baths when they reached the desired cooling temperatures. We took out the Form 4 chocolate when it reached it as a temperature between 16 to 21 degrees Celsius, being 17 degrees Celsius. Then, we took Form 3 chocolate from its ice bath when it reached a temperature between 5 to 10 degrees Celsius, measuring 7 degrees Celsius. Finally, we took the rapid cooling chocolate out of the freezer after approximately 8 minutes until it solidified and measured to a temperature to be 9 degrees Celsius. Later, we took a small piece of each sample in order to calculate the density of the chocolate. For forms 1, 3, and 4, we placed a styrofoam plate on the scale and teared it so that it would only record the mass of the chocolate. Next, we filled up a graduated cylinder to 40 milliliters of water and placed the chocolate samples in the graduated cylinder. Using the displacement method, we measured the volume of each of the samples of chocolate. To find the volume of the chocolate itself, we subtracted the previous volume of the water, 40 milliliters, from the new volume of the water with the chocolate. Approaching the end, we found the density of the chocolate by dividing the mass of the chocolate and its volume. We further analyzed the melting points of our tempered chocolate. We compared it to the accepted melting points of each of the forms, which we found in our research. We did so by placing all three beakers of chocolate on the hot plate with thermometers in each. We watched at what temperatures each chocolate changed from solid to liquid. After completing the totality of the experiment, there were some general qualities that were notably observed. Other than the melting point, our results weren't too abstract. Forms 3 and Forms 4 were firmer and harder to take apart than Form 1, and all three structures' smells remained invariant. Possible errors that may have incurred include, but are not limited to, misreading measurements, poor monitorization of temperature, faulty equipment, not containing the samples in a controlled environment, etc. Overall, our experiment provided us with an interesting observations, and while parts of our data did not quite match up with our research, it was still mostly successful. Thank you for watching. Happy morphing!